welcome to the continuation of our Kanban University Distinguished Fellow Program. I'm Todd Little, Chairman of Kanban University, and today I have the privilege of introducing Frank Vega. Welcome, Frank, and congratulations on being named a, distinguished, a Kanban University Distinguished Fellow. Um, could you please tell us a bit about yourself? Well, first of all, thanks, Todd. And, and no one was probably more surprised than me, but I'm very honored and, and uh, just very grateful to be a part of this community. So, yeah. Um, I seem like I've been introducing myself now for quite a while here. I just started a new uh, engagement. And so I'll give you the, the 50,000 foot view. I've been in an IT, the professional perspective that is, I've been in IT for now 30 years, which is quite surprising. And about half of that, I've been as an employee in various roles, um, technical roles, tech, tech lead, developer, software architect, director, web services. But the other half of that, I've worked for myself as an independent consultant and contractor. Um, first time, it was about six or seven years doing development work, and then the last 10 years doing what I'm doing now, which is uh, a lean and agile coach, and primarily, of course, coaching with the Kanban method with the organizations that I work with. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Uh, so you said for the last 10 years, you've been doing mostly in the, the lean and, and uh, agile space. Um, how were you introduced to Kanban originally? How was I introduced, you say? Yeah. How are you? Yeah, so this goes back, and we were kind of chatting about it um, earlier, goes back to um, early 2000s, like 2003, 2004, I took on a new engagement as a software architect and tech lead. And I quickly learned that there was more than just improving the technical skills. And of course, we started looking at, at things like Lean and Agile, but I had not really heard of quote unquote flow or Little's Law or Kanban yet. So I ran into a paper, um, that was written by, I think, Sanjay Augustine, and, and it started to introduce me to this concept of Little's Law and, and Limiting Whip. And then in 2007, one of our team members went out to um, the Agile Conference in DC, and he found an open space that David uh, Anderson was, was running. And he came back and, and he introduced, um, you know, some of the concepts that he'd heard about. And thankfully, you know, I think he got David's number somehow, maybe on a card, and we were able to have a quick conversation with David over the phone. I think it was August. I don't know if he remembers it, but uh, you know, we ran some questions by him and such. And, and that was our start really with um, implementing pool concepts and getting into, into Kanban. And then shortly after I had the fortune of sitting in on a training session that, that David gave for a, to a private company that, that I was working with. And then 2009, we had the first conference. And so I was, I was drawn to it by that time. Excellent. So you've been around for a very long time to the Kanban space. Um, this is the 10th anniversary of Kanban University. So mm -hmm. you even predate Kanban University start. Um, in your experience, how has Kanban and the Kanban community evolved over the past 10 years? Yeah, you know, I've been, I've been thinking about that. Um, it has been, you know, interesting to see the community over 10 years and, and especially uh, meeting folks over and over again at the conferences. And when I thought about some, something to, you know, to describe how I've seen it change, one of the things that came to mind is, you know, when we first started, it was this really small core group. And many of us were coming from an IT background. And, and um, over the years, um, as the conference continued to grow and the community continued to grow, I saw how we diverged out and brought in, you know, people and speakers from different domains, but related domains. And it, we got quite broad. In, in some to some extent and then we hit a point where we began to converge we took I think some key things from those um, outside areas but related and and I saw how we began to integrate from that and then bring back more of a focus to what I think we see today in the Kanban community yet also now seeing how we can better expand beyond IT so I think that's the way I've seen us kind of grow and then refocus over the last 10 years. Well, thank you, great. Um, and speaking of this Lance Mr. journey, uh, you have the distinction of being one of the few people other than David Anderson and Janice Lyndon Reed, maybe there's some others, but I know you, uh, that have attended every one of the North America uh, Kanban conferences, uh, even predating the start of Kanban University. But what is it that drew you to the conference and, and why do you make sure that you attend every year? Yeah, so there's two parts to that question, right? So the first part, um, I think I kind of alluded to earlier, 
um, I, I saw that we needed to go beyond technical practices. You know, as a de developer, I knew there was more to it in order to solve the problems that we were seeing in that particular organization that I was employed with at the time. So that's what drew me to, obviously, the first conference. But what kept me coming back was kind of an experience that I had earlier with a conference. My first conference, professional conference, right after I got out of school was in Edmonton. And I was, um, it was in a, a role that I was a GIS analyst. And I remember going to this first conference and, and, and uh, seeing people sign up for the, the seminars and the webinar, or seminars, excuse me. And then I'd walk in and I would see that nobody was in the room. There's like four or five of us. And I realized that many folks were coming to the conference uh, in Edmonton there to run up to Calgary and, and you know, just enjoy their time. And, and it was more of a, of a mini vacation, so to speak. But our conference was different. That first conference was very different and the conferences afterwards, the people that I saw coming were fully attending, you know, the seminars and the speakers and the presentations, that type of thing. And I realized that this conference was, was, was truly more valuable than all the other, you know, conferences up that I had seen to that point. And the conference has remained that way for me. It's, it's really, truly a place where I think we can get the social interaction and maybe some, some you know, um, nice spots to attend, but it was really just the the depth of the conversations and the knowledge and the sharing that was occurring that kept me coming back. And I still think that's that's the way it exists today. Great, thanks. Um, and what are you doing with Kanban now? Well, on the professional side, I mean, I mean, I continue as an independent consultant working with organizations. I've had the good fortune to work with three or four, the last three engagements uh, to be working on high visible strategic initiatives within the organizations with um, high visibility with even at the C level. And, but more often than not, I'm called in to work at the lower levels with, with, with teams. And, um, but that's primarily how I'm using the combine method, working with the teams and, but trying to connect their efforts and align their efforts to what's happening above them at that strategic level and beginning to give insights to those above the teams that we need to look at these these concepts that we bring from the Kanban method and utilize them at those higher levels. Something like we see with uh, flight levels, for example. And so, in fact, to be honest with you, I just gave a presentation on the Kanban method um, yesterday to the organization I'm working with now and helping them see that it's not just about the teams, folks. It's about what you're doing at that middle tier and that upper tier and aligning strategic initiatives to you know, the, the lower um, sub initiatives and epics as we call them in our IT domains often uh, to what's happening on the ground floor. So that's a lot of what I'm doing with Kanban method today. Oh, great, thanks. Um, and then last question, um, what do you value most about the Kanban University community? Oh, there's a couple of things that come to mind. Um, well, first of all, um, just the, the amount of um, openness and sharing that I see from many of the folks that I've now seen for years over and over again that that uh, appear at the conference, um, not just in the US, but globally. And I, I know that I can ping somebody on LinkedIn, for example, or or, or reach out to them via email and um, they'll, they'll you know, share their insights with their experiences. And that's just for me, it's, it's been a very helpful to have that especially when you work as an independent consultant on your own, I'm not part of an organization on a day-to-day, month-to-month basis. You know, having that, that group, that community of practice has been very valuable to me. Um, and I really, really enjoy the one-on-one -on -one conversations I have with, with a handful that I have on a very frequent basis, these kinds of conversations. And uh, I, I just have not had that in any other quote-unquote community that I've been, been associated with. Well, great. Well, thank you very much, Frank, and congratulations again on being named the Kanban University Distinguished Fellow. I really appreciate your time with us today. Well, thank you, Todd. And as I said earlier, it's interesting to me that our paths crossed many, many years ago, and it's just awesome to see that we're still crossing paths here today as well. So, thanks again.